Greetings. Excellent. Just got done watching Joshua Bardwell's video on mounting antennas and I'm frustrated. a bit because um okay so maybe from a standpoint of toughness and if we're only looking at that yeah okay you know the way he's mounting his antennas uh is 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 pretty tough i guess um but some of the things that are said are completely wrong i just did um a video on the best way i feel to mount an antenna um, and I'll put the link in the description, but uh, the, the first thing I want to, to address um, is the toughness of an antenna. So in the video, this is the, uh, this is the antenna that I, I made in the video um, as an example, and it's a zip tie antenna. Uh, it's maybe three inches long, but it's extremely, it's extremely stiff. Okay, there are two layers of good quality shrink tube on there on a wide zip tie, not a little thin narrow guy. This is extremely, extremely stiff, okay? Um, this is not going to get sucked into a prop. That's absurd. This is one of my older quadcopters. I run the antennas on this this way. I've run them on this this way for a long time and they've never ever been sucked into the prop. There is no way that that's getting sucked into the prop. Likewise, if it does, it's going to hit that and there's like I can't communicate to you the strength and how much force I have to press on this to get it to touch there. The suction of this prop is not going to suck that in. Um, and Josh, just drill a couple holes and put the zip tie wherever the hell you want. You can put two, three, four. You can strengthen up any way you want. You don't have to use whatever hole in that top plate you have. I drilled these, the eighth inch drill bit. It's perfect, okay? And you might want to think about tipping, tilting this antenna up just a little bit. It's gonna give you that much more range with that and it's not gonna hit anything. You know, I, I get maybe, coming straight out when you land like this I guess you're not gonna hit it but you're not gonna hit it by much these antennas are tough as heck okay um, now I wanna talk about how he mounts his antenna and I wanna start by saying I think it's very clever okay um, and yes it's most likely not going to get chopped up by uh, a, a, a prop but this isn't going to happen either. The only time it touches the props is if it's upside down and they're and it's they're crushed into it. And even then, it, it doesn't hit. I've done this for so long, and I've never had an issue with this. Has been the best way I've ever mounted my antennas. Now, why why am I so adamant about having the antennas this way? Well, this is a diversity antenna. No, this is not 900 megahertz this is not crossfire this is the standard uh you know uh two point gigahertz radio okay this is a um well there's not a radio in this right now because it it it, it s the bed so to speak but uh i had an um uh, x4r in here and you know that worked great but th there's a reason why having the antennas like this is the best way to do the antennas. Now, 
I I will admit that for most flying, um, in a you know mini quad freestyle, maybe even racing, if you're not going long range, um, the difference is negligible. The way that Josh Bardwell, Joshua Bardwell, is suggesting to mount his antennas probably isn't going to make that much of a difference. But there's a reason why. I got to this way of mounting the antennas and yet they're a little longer than they need to be as well and if you made them maybe an inch shorter um, would be adequate and there's no way they're going to get sucked into the props then as well um, but these are diversity antennas okay this means that the, the whichever antenna is getting the best signal is the antenna the receiver well Tran, uh, um, transceiver is going to use okay and when you have them the way that Josh has them well one he's got them coming in front of the frame so if he's flying away from him, that arm is blocking some of the signal because he used that explanation for some of his reasoning but I don't think it's gonna really block it that much maybe I'm just kinda I'm sorry that was kind of a shot but uh, I, I don't mean that I apologize but um, He's got them um, horizontally opposed. So um, pretty much any antenna, you're going to want, if you have it vertical, you're going to want the antenna vertical. Okay, it's, it, it's even more important with a dipole like the crossfire, but there is still a polarization to the radio waves coming off that antenna. So when you have an antenna this way and an antenna this way, if this is your transmitter and this is your receiver, this one is not going to receive this signal as well as it could as if the antenna were this way. And yes, this is not a dipole, but um, it's still going to have polarization. The other thing is that this thing flies in all sorts of directions and it spins and rolls in all sorts of different directions. Okay, um, When the antenna is like this, Having them at a 90 degree from each other puts the antenna at about a 45. And at about 45 degrees, there is some differences in polarization, but the, the loss is negligible as opposed to having it com completely like, you know, uh, not, you know, completely counteropposed like that. Well, not counteropposed, but yeah, one this way and one that way is what I'm trying to say. And, um, um, so when your antenna is this way, the benefit's going to outweigh whatever you lose. But the main thing is, because they're 90 degrees angle, as you're rolling, you have at least one antenna that's vertical. You go back, you're still within a good, good um, angle to receive a signal. You roll this way, there's one vertical. If you were to turn all the way this way, well, you have two antennas again, because it doesn't matter if it's pointing down or up. These are both close enough to vertical to match the vertical antenna on the radio. As you turn, well, we got another antenna that's in a good spot. Keep turning, two more again. Keep turning, that one's in a good spot. So having them this way, as this thing is rolling that way and around, is keeping at least one antenna in a premium orientation to communicate with the, the the radio in your hands because both of these radios because there is telemetry they're both transceivers um, I like to refer as the handset as the radio and the one in here as the receiver even though they both transceive just simplifies things but that's why I do this now the reason why I have my antennas long I've had them shorter because I had the thinking of if I made them really short then the, there's less likely to get in, hit by the props. But the problem that I found, even flying in close proximity, is I would lose my telemetry once in a while. And yes, I updated the, the uh, um, X4R to the latest firmware to solve that problem, uh, and that wasn't the issue. I kept having dropouts on the telemetry. Did I lose control of uh, my quad? No, no, I didn't, but my telemetry would drop out when I was doing certain maneuvers in the air. So I got the, um, 
the business end of these antennas, which is the very top portion, is the actual the, the actual antenna. I got them away from the quadcopter. I don't lose telemetry almost ever now. I have to be far away to lose telemetry. Um, so, yes, I guess Joshua Bardwell has evolved his antennas to where he's at now. I've done the same thing, and um, I, I I just don't like the fact that you know this is not going to this is not going to get sucked in and you know what I'll tell you what let's do this okay so here's what we're gonna do and do not try this this is the stupidest thing to do ever it's absolutely ridiculous and dangerous but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my foot I had to go get a shoe on I'm gonna put my foot on top of the quad I'm gonna I'm going to arm it I'm going to rev it and I'm going to stick this antenna that I made in that video into the prop and we're going to see how much damage it actually does. So again, do not try this because this is not something you should do inside of a house. And I'm hitting. What am I hitting? This antenna because I'm kicking it down because this is the stupidest damn thing I've ever done. I stuck that straight in there, and all it did was sh just kind of shear the end. Here, let's do that again. Let's do it again, this stupidness. Hey, keep knocking that down. One more time, let's see if we can get this right. I stuck that in there hardcore and all it did was nip the edge off of it I mean you can see that I stuck it in down here there are marks all the way up the side of this and I put it in there straight and this antenna is still together okay so we took this quadcopter and this antenna that I made for another video and did the stupidest thing I could ever do to make a point and that point is that shrink tube and zip ties is a darn good tough antenna and solves all the issues you're gonna have with destroying an antenna and why I run them the way I do so I'm going to bring this in real close and I really shoved this in hardcore twice if you look you can see there are marks running all around the end here out, up to here and I put it in so far I hit my the the the, the right here my finger and I'm I'm got no marks or blood thank God but I touched the prop it hit my hand um, luckily it was the top edge and it was spinning so fast it just buzzed the top of my hand on a non sharp edge but this is all the damage it did and it did lacerate the side of the shrink tube but as you can see there are marks if we turn it here you see those marks those are marks from the prop nailing this thing I really stuck it in there as far as I could get it to try to do the most damage that I could do and the inner antenna in here the the, the, the part inside of this okay that is the business end is still good there is no way okay if I can take this and shove it into a prop and I put it full blast if I can shove it into a prop and that's all the damage is done you're telling me that the prop is gonna suck this thing down I mean this thing I wish you could feel how tough this is I mean it goes look it goes straight back you hear I'm flicking it I hope that comes through I really do this is tough now zip ties so the first version of this that I did I used a zip tie that was about that big okay this is not good enough this is not adequate although it lasted and what ended up happening was it was on 
this one, because it was the first quad that I ever did this, this has a heavier zip tie in it now. The base of this had broke and was hanging. And what had happened was the zip tie and the antenna had gone like this and I was flying around with with this antenna smashing over and over was still connected to the to the to the receiver was still working was able to reuse the same wire with no issues whatsoever now this this is the thickness that I use now and it is quite a bit different as you can see it is a heavier zip tie okay I use a heavy zip tie sturdy nylon zip tie and I use a premium quality shrink tube and I use two layers of shrink tube I also cap the top end and you'll see how I do that in my video and I also put another layer right down here at the bottom as like a collar which actually helps stiffen that antenna from being pulled down there is not enough suction going to be produced by this prop to ever be able to pull this down there's no way you can hold this thing and rocket these engines engines I called them an engine this is how flustered I am rocket these mo rocket engines rocket these motors full blast this is not gonna move that's ridiculously absurd to hear somebody say that but there I've proved it it's ridiculous to think that that way of doing antennas has any risk of destroying your antenna. So, I mean, maybe Josh has had some issues uh, other than shoving the antenna into a, a, a full speed prop, okay? But, um, I don't know. I think I've made my point that zip ties and shrink tube is a really good antenna.